Hello everyone, in this video we will take a deeper dive into dependency graph. We will understand how a dependency graph works inside Maya and we will also understand three different terms which are dirty propagation, push and pull mechanism and lazy evaluation. To understand these three different terms we will take a very simple daily life example. Suppose you have to do some laundry and you go inside the laundry room and you see that there are a couple of washers there, couple of dryers and couple of buckets associated with the dryers. And there are also timers on top of each washer and each dryer. So one washer has 10 minutes left on it, one washer has 0 minutes left on it and another washer has 15 minutes left on it. In the similar way, the dryers have timers as well. One has 5 minutes left, one has 0 minutes left and one has 20 minutes left. So as soon as you enter inside the room, you see those timers on top of washers and dryers. And just by looking at the timers, you figure out that you are going to use this washer and you are going to use this dryer and then you are going to use this bucket which is associated with the dryer. So in your brain you have marked these washers and dryers as red which is telling you that some work needs to be done on these three different things and after you figure out everything, you, your brain comes back to the point and you start putting your clothes. So you, you're starting the actual work now. And once you put your clothes for washing and it washer washes your clothes and you take your clothes out from it, you mark your brain marks it green and you know that now the work of washer is done and then you proceed to the dryer and in the same way when you put your clothes in it dryer dries your clothes and you take your clothes out you mark this dryer as green and your brain knows that the work of the dryer is done in the same way you put it in bucket and you know that the work of the bucket is done and now you are ready to take your clothes back and use them. By this simple daily life example, we got an idea what is dirty propagation and what is push and pull mechanism. And now we will change this daily life example into a Maya example and we will change this graph into a dependency graph of Maya. So we have changed this complete example into a dependency graph of Maya and consider this dependency graph is a graph of generating three different right angled triangles which share a base. The, the length of their bases is the same or the length of their base axis is the same. So this is just an example and what I have done here is there is a node to which I supply any number and based on that it does some calculation and it gives you another number. And this number goes into a Pythagorean node which generates the base length. So consider this as a hypotenuse length. And based on that, it generates the base length. And these three different nodes are triangle generation node. Based on the length of the base, these three different nodes generate three different triangles, three different right angle triangles. Okay, so this is the simple example. And now we would see in our dependency graph node what exactly happens when we supply a value. 
Now, before understanding the complete workflow, we will quickly dissect a dependency graph node and we will see what is inside it. So, a dependency graph node has some inputs and may have one or more than one outputs. So, it has these three inputs, which is i1, i2, and i3. And in this case, it has two outputs, O1 and O2. In the next video, when we will design our own custom dependency graph node, we will see that we will write a compute function, which is the brain of the dependency graph. It will do all your calculations. And we will also design the circuitry, which means that we will design that based on which inputs, which output will be affected. So in this case, based on I1 and I2 attributes, O1 attribute is affected. And by the change of I2 and I3, O2 is affected. So we will see all these working in detail in the next video when we will design our, our own custom node. But just to give you an idea, there is a compute function in here and we have we designed the circuitry as well. So similarly, in this case, our dependency graph nodes have the circuitry inside them. These input attributes are connected to these output attributes. There is some calculation going on inside each node and compute function is responsible for that calculation. So we have this circuitry inside the nodes. And when we supply a value to this input attribute, Maya knows that this input is connected to this output. And to update this output, some calculation needs to be done. I'm not doing the calculation right now, but I'm, I know that some calculation needs to be done on here. And then I will see that this attribute is connected to three different attributes of three different nodes. So I will mark them dirty as well, because this value is directly going inside these attributes. And because these input attributes are connected to these three different output attributes, I will mark them dirty as well. In the similar way, it works for here. And finally, I have reached to the terminal of this dependency graph. Now, all these attributes or plugs will remain dirty until a updation request comes. An updation request might come from a viewport. Your viewport has to be updated. Or if someone or the user has opened the attribute editor or the channel box, or someone has run a get getter command on a plug or an attribute. So if the updation request has come on these three different triangles, you can see these three different triangles in the viewport and Maya checks and sees that these attributes are dirty. And it goes back and it sees that its input plug or input attribute is dirty as well and the attribute or the plug connected to the input of this node is dirty as well. So in this way, it keeps on propagating in the opposite direction. And it comes here and it finds that input and output plug of this node are dirty as well. 
and eventually it reaches to this plug which is dirty and it knows that some calculation needs to be done here so it performs the calculation at this point and as soon as the calculation is performed this attribute or the plug will be marked as clean and this plug is connected to these three different plugs so they will be marked as green as well okay so the updation request has come on these three different triangles and it has started propagating over here so it would perform the compute function of this node and it will mark as clean the updation request has not come on these two different nodes which are for something else and you can not see them in the viewport or there is no property which is shown in the attribute editor channel box and no one has requested the output of these nodes so Maya will not perform the calculation on these nodes and their output attributes or the plugs will stay dirty now we will propagate or move in this direction the output of this node is connected to input of these three different nodes so they will be marked as clean and we will perform the calculation on these three different nodes and their outputs will be marked as clean in the similar way finally we will have our updated triangles and they will be shown in your viewport so green is your clean attribute or plug so dirty and clean are the plugs or the attributes not the nodes and red is your dirty attribute or plug and this process is called as dirty propagation because the dirty quality is propagating in a direction until it reaches to the terminal point of the DAG and when any updation is requested it starts coming back and starts checking which nodes are dirty and finally when it reaches to the last dirty node
by updating the test of not pinging and the small checksum of the fresh user attribute of the send back and get echo command, those attributes will not be updated. And this is a lazy process of evaluating the compute and evaluating your node. And this is a very small uh, approach uh, because in this way you are not updating every single node in your team every single second or more than that. So only those nodes will be updated which, is which are required to update and that is how we can see the action result in your node. So that is what is lazy evaluation and in this video we understood this circuit integration and system integration using uh, lazy evaluation and now we know that how a dependency graph works inside a node. So that's it and thank you for watching.